what can these two cars possibly have in common? This Alfa Romeo Disco Volante, a contemporary prototype, and this Dolai 135M Phaeton, designed by Figoni and Falaschi in 1937. While both of these very different cars have won the Chantilly Art and Elegance Richard Mille contest in early September. The Chantilly estate is famous all over the world for its 16th century castle, parks and French gardens designed by Le Nôtre, as well as for its stables and race course. Since this year, Chantilly also provides the most prestigious of backdrops for the art and elegance competition organized by Peter Otto. The team has been hard at work for two years to create this event where art, elegance, tradition and of course automobile come together in the finest of countryside settings. We will recreate the great tradition of elegance competitions as they existed in France. There will be about 100 cars split into different classes or categories. They will be displayed and judged in the Le Nôtre Gardens. We will also show 10 concept cars, including three that will have their world premiere here. And they will be revealed just like it happened 15 years ago, with each car teamed up with a fashion designer. A great fan of automobile and design, it makes perfect sense for watchmaker Richard Mill to be the event's main partner. It is obvious that today we take less risks. We have more commercial data, more administrative considerations to take into account, and also lots of technical studies about the cars. So we end up with designs that look more and more like each other. But seeing here so many different styles, different engines, different colors, different noises, it's really an inspiration and it helps us to realize that taking risk and design and in technology is really rewarding. The Chantilly event is also an opportunity to celebrate the 100th anniversary of an Italian brand of sports cars that has seen a revival in recent years, a success that rewards careful efforts to bring the brand back to the highest level. Maserati has put together an exquisite display to celebrate its centenary in style. The whole history of the brand is presented on the loans of the castle for a nice walk, not only into Maserati's past, but also into its future. We are celebrating our 100th anniversary, so we are showing our whole history here. From our first 1920s makes to the most recent prototypes that will hit the road very soon. The Alfieri concept was presented this year at the Geneva Fair, and we are lucky to have it here as well. We will actually start producing this car in our factories very, very soon. Here is another unique prototype, the incredible Boomerang, designed by Giugiaro in 1972. This car seems to be coming straight from outer space, and like most prototypes, it was designed with a true groundbreaking spirit. It's an astonishing car, really. The real difficulty is visibility. And also just see the space you've got to take your ticket at the highway toll. It's just not planned for it and you have to get off the car first. The happy owners of the splendid cars taking part in the competition were invited to take part in a small tour of the region on Saturday afternoon. A pleasant stroll that took the drivers and their vehicles to the Chateau de Verderon for an elegant lunch. Of course, this kind of display, both uncommon and prestigious, is sure to attract the attention on the road. I think people find it endearing, even if they don't realize the value of these cars. Even here today, we've seen many people who are really happy to see the cars driving through.
Later that afternoon, the return to the Chantilly estate is equally pleasant. At the end of Saturday, all competing cars are placed on the loans. About 100 of them will be judged the following day in 10 categories to win a state prize. On Saturday already, several automobile clubs invited to attend the event had access to the castle's gardens, while the fun display received its finishing touches. For the day, Chantilly has become the epicenter of the old cars world. But Chantilly is also the temple of horse riding with the Grand Prix de Diane racetrack and its elegant stables. This is the backdrop that Patrick Peter chose to receive his guest for a high-level horse show, followed by a meal served for about 600 people. Tuxedos and nightgowns are a must. The master of ceremony, French journalist Guillaume Durand, officially opens the first Richard Mille Art and Elegance contest of Chantilly. Of course, fine dining and haute cuisine are an integral part of the event, with three chefs of the prestigious Rollet and Chateau Association at work in the kitchen. On Sunday morning, everything is ready to welcome the public, who is also playing the elegance game with sophisticated attire. The atmosphere is perfect for a leisurely walk amidst the cars on display on the loans of the castle. For just a day, we are traveling back in time to the mid-20th century for a country picnic with a pleasant late summer weather. Of course, children are invited too, and they can enjoy a range of fun activities that makes video games pale in comparison. Introduction to Polo, outing on the lake with old rowing boats or steamships, a real delight for visitors of all ages.
Meanwhile, those who are not so fond of the water can also stroll around the beautiful grounds in a horse-drawn carriage. It is now time for the competition. The 10 categories are as follows. The ancestors built before 1904, sports and racing cars of the interwar period, great French bodywork from the 20s and 30s, British chassis and Italian bodywork, concept cars of the 60s and 70s, untouched cars in original condition, endurance central engine sports cars built before 76, the Bugatti Tribute, great Maserati bodyworks, and finally, Maserati racing cars. A rich menu that the jury will have to dissect in minute detail. The jury members come from different backgrounds. Of course, most of them have in-depth automobile knowledge, but some of them have a background in art and culture, not necessarily linked to the cars world. To pick their favorites, they obviously have to follow specific criteria. We have several criteria. The car has to be genuine and well conserved. We always ask if the bodywork is original or if it's restored, how it's done. We also want to know the car can actually be used. They don't just have to look perfect, we also want them to be functional. It's the first time that the competition takes place here. Chantilly is an extraordinary place. And everything here looks very authentic. Even if the paint is not shiny, it has to be genuine, that's the most important thing. Christophe Pound is used to searching for car treasures, so he will certainly be more sensitive to certain criteria, while a major designer like Gordon Murray, who fathered historic McLarens, may be sensitive to other factors. Yeah, I think if you, if you look at a lot of the iconic cars, they're what I call one-person cars. You know, like the Bugattis, the Lotus with Colin Chapman, cars like that where you have one uh, person, Dante Giacorsa with the, uh, the Fiat's, where you have one person that put all the feeling and all the emotion into the design of the car. That doesn't happen anymore. Unfortunately, modern cars are designed by committees, and that's why, actually, a lot of modern cars don't have much um, emotion or character. Everything is scrutinized and analyzed by the judges, who often have to be careful not to get carried away by their personal feelings. But it is hard to remain cool and collected when you're surrounded by such beauties, such as this Jaguar XK120 redesigned by Savonuzzi. Only three copies of the Supersonic were built in the 50s. And that's where it was interesting to see, for instance, the fact that we had this Jaguar which we uh, just uh, had a look at, which had been built in Italy as coach built in Italy by Kia, which was originally uh, a Jaguar XK140, where it, by coach building it in Italy, they were able to save 200 kilograms of weight. So it made a big difference in terms of obviously what could be done in terms of performance. So I think that makes this category rather special and very unusual. And there are not very many cars that were made. Many of them are fairly unique or almost as good as unique, hardly two or three or four were made or at the best a dozen or whatever. We are now entering the magical world of the prestigious Bugatti. The Royal Coupe Napoleon Type 41 stands in the middle of the courtyard of the castle. It is extremely rare that this car ever leaves its museum home in Mulhouse. How to judge the most beautiful Bugatti? This is the puzzle that the jury members have to solve. 
the brand specialist, however, are in an uncommon state of excitement because of what specialists call a barn find. Most of the cars on display here had been seen before elsewhere. But this little Atalon 23 stayed in a garage for years and hadn't been seen anywhere, so it's very rare to see it. The same thing goes for the 35. Its bodywork is original, and it's very uncommon to see that. A 1924 car with its original bodywork, no less, a car that has remained hidden in a garage for a hoping 70 years. For Pierre-Yves Logier, historian of the brand, this car is incredible. The car has detail that others don't have. This one hasn't been changed. For example, the leather seats have stayed completely untouched, as well as the aluminium touches on the dashboard. There's no other Bugatti like this, so beautiful and so rare, so we have to enjoy this one. It literally came out of its hideout after 60 years. Until the middle of the last century, the picnic was a real institution, the activity of the weekend in the countryside. We left by car with all the necessary gear to have a good time in the countryside, and of course the storage chests became an essential piece of equipment. Several artisans presented their work in Chantilly, an unusual display of elegance and skill. Several artworks have also found their rightful place in the gardens. For example, these chandeliers, designed by Mathieu, hung over some of the most beautiful bodyworks of the automobile industry. The sun was shining bright for the highlight of the show. The public has responded enthusiastically to the organizers' invitation to attend this meeting of art and elegance, a recreation of events as they existed in France many years ago. The Chantilly competition has reached the level of other iconic events such as Pebble Beach in the USA and Villa d'Este in Italy. On Sunday early afternoon, the winning cars are getting ready for a parade. After two rounds around the mirror of the Lunotre Gardens, the cars are invited to climb on the podium under the inquisitive eye of the judges and the master of ceremony, Guillaume Durand, himself a great car enthusiast. My passion started with my father's MGA convertible. Even my mother's small cars. That were really a dream for me when I was younger. Then when I went to New York City, I saw that some Ferraris were displayed in art museums alongside other artworks. It surprised me because in France we don't have that culture. We can't really imagine the Louvre displaying Ferraris or Delahaye's. I've completely integrated that culture and it became my own passion. And I've had different cars, including some Fiat 500s. At 113 years old, the small monocylinder Panard 3.5 horses of the Sterling Clément has no trouble whirling around the fountain to come and receive its first award. The category of racing cars from the interwar period includes more imposing cars such as the Bentley Speed 6, which came second in Le Mans in 1930, and then it has been restored and pampered to reach us in a perfect state. We have preserved and restored the car to keep the bodywork in its original state. As you can see, the paint is a little bit damaged even, but it's genuine and all the parts are original. In the end, this Aston Martin GB4 GT Zagato wins the competition of pretty chassis wrapped in Italian design. Zagato produced 19 models, each with its distinctive touches. This one is the first in a series that began in 1961. The first prize for concept cars from the 60s and 70s goes to this Lamborghini 350 GT built by Touring. In the untouched category, a royal vehicle gets the crown, the Ferrari 330 GTC built for Belgian King Leopold III, a foreshadow of the future 365 GT. The green coat of the Lola T70B certainly brings back happy memories to endurance racing lovers. It was the car of David Piper's team. 
In Chantilly, it won the award for the endurance machines built before 1976. This 2000 Gran Turismo is one of 19 cafes built and bodied by Zagato. It won the prize of the most beautiful Maserati in Chantilly. Research is like every day you look for something and then suddenly you find a very interesting picture, a very, very important piece of information. But um, it's a restoration of almost a year. The car was restored in Italy, so it's an Italian car. It was done in Italy by Carrozzeria Quality Cars in Padova. And I think we did a very good team together. They put their hands on the car. And, um, well, we flew there every uh, two or three months to check everything and discuss and, and take decisions. No need to master Italian to understand why this Maserati A6 was dubbed Mono Faro. At Chantilly, this car won the top prize in the Maserati racing class. We owe the start of this Bugatti 55 to Jean, son of the brand's founder, Ettore Bugatti. The 55 is number one of the Bugatti category. And then there is the creme de la creme, the most beautiful of the beautiful. The richer meal prize goes to Peter Malin and his Delay 135M, who competed in the category of major French coach builders. Fagoni did Delahays and Delages and Talbalagos, but he was the artist that had the, the best of the great French curves, what they call the Fibonacci curve, that the beautiful lines like that, so you can see on the fenders and the bumpers here and so on. So he really had like a wind tunnel in his head. He could see what would be aerodynamic and he could draw it. Whereas now, you know, you put something through a wind tunnel and you test for coefficients of friction. He had one of those in his head, so he was a kind of an amazing guy. They are young, beautiful, and they will go down the catwalk in a few moments on board of impressive prototypes as part of the Concours d'Elegance. The Chantilly event was indeed not only about beautiful old cars, but also a celebration of modern beauty with some contemporary concept cars unveiled here for the first time. First European appearance for this McLaren 650S and first show worldwide for this Aston Martin Zagato shooting break. The star of the show was undoubtedly the Citroën DS Divine, a concept car with a futuristic look that probably gives a hint of what the next Citroën DS Coupe range will look like. It was presented in Chantilly for the very first time before the Paris Motor Show. The winning duo of the Concours d'Elegance is the Alfa Romeo Disco Volante and fashion designer Paco Rabanne. The first Chantilly Art and Elegance Richard Mille contest is an undeniable success. Patrick Vetter and his team are already dreaming up the second edition. We are very pleased with the event. We had important car collectors here coming from all over the world. And they have been astonished by the show and by the organization that we offered. They also appreciated the special touch that we brought to the event compared to other events. So I think I'm pretty sure that they will come back next year. We've already saved the date for this rendezvous of art and elegance in Chantilly, the first weekend of September 2015. And there is one last thing that we had to try before we go, the famous crème chantilly, a delightful whipped cream prepared by the best of chefs. <laughs>